Hello, welcome to Living Face Midweek Devotions. We're continuing in Luke chapter 18 on our investigative journey of Jesus. And for the last several weeks, we've been talking about the hard teachings of Jesus. How to live as a disciple, a believer of Jesus. And in Luke 17, Jesus talked to the disciples about how to confront sin and how often to forgive, but then also how to live in your duty as a disciple, leading up to talking about the coming of the kingdom of God. And when Jesus comes back, he's setting them up for when he has to suffer on the cross and he's going to leave them. And then they're waiting for his return. We are still waiting for his return. So he's prepping us all for that. Then in Luke chapter 18, he continues on how to live as a disciple. And it's all about humility. Let's look at Luke chapter 18, beginning at verse 1. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. He said, In a certain town there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with a plea. Grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused, but finally he said to himself, Even though I don't fear God or care what people think, Yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice, so that she won't eventually come and attack me. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones, who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice, and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Let's stop there for a moment. Notice how this widow is very persistent, very persistent to this judge. And this judge is unjust. He's not friendly. He's not fair. And then Jesus compares that to how often we should be persistent with him and God. He's not saying that he's unjust or God's unjust. What he is saying is how much more God who is fair God who is loving, God who is merciful, will listen to our persistence, even more compared to then this unjust judge. But think about the individual that Jesus puts here. It's not just any random person. He says it's a widow. Widows are in a very humble state because in the culture there, widows, women themselves, could not provide for themselves. They couldn't get jobs. They couldn't take care of themselves because they couldn't earn the money. So they're in a very humble state. But even in our humble state, God is calling us to reach out to him, to be persistent in our prayers, to rely on him to provide for us, to rely on him to be fair, to rely on him to carry out justice. Then he goes on into our next section, starting at verse 9. To some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everyone else, Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. I think you can see the two different camps of people that Jesus is setting up here. He's addressing those who lift themselves up. He's addressing the Pharisees. And sometimes we have Pharisee tendencies inside of us too, don't we? We proud of ourselves. We like to talk about the things that we have accomplished and get credit for those things. We like to hear from people. 
And so sometimes we feel like we get the credit. We deserve recognition. But then there's the tax collector who recognizes that he's a sinner, that he doesn't deserve any recognition. In fact, he doesn't even deserve any mercy or forgiveness. And he beats his breast humbly in a corner, doesn't make a show of it like the Pharisee did, who's probably in the middle of the synagogue, beating his chest, making sure everybody hears that he's praying. And in fact, the way the Greek is translated, he could even be considered praying to himself. That's how stuck in himself he was. But the tax collector was not stuck in himself at all. In fact, he humbles himself so much before God, saying he's not worthy, asking God for his mercy. And what does Jesus tell us? Jesus says, it's the tax collector, the one who humbled himself, who is forgiven, the one who is justified, declared not guilty. First story, widow in a humble state. Second story, tax collector who puts himself in a humble state and lowers himself before God asking for mercy. And now the third little section, starting at verse 15. People were also bringing babies to Jesus for him to place his hands on them. When the disciples saw this, they rebuked them. But Jesus called the children to him and said, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. How often do we boast about the knowledge that we have? We're working on getting more and more knowledge and studying to be smarter and smarter. Well, when we have faith, what Jesus is saying is sometimes knowledge actually gets in the way. Gets in the way of our trust. Gets in the way of our complete faith in him. And so he encourages us to be like the babies, the little children. Ones who put complete, full trust in their parents. Provide for them. Complete, full trust in what they say. Jesus is telling us to have faith like a child. And to just trust in his word. To just trust what he says. And if we don't get it, still believe it. Because it's not about understanding. It's about trusting. It's about lowering ourselves to know that God is above us. That he is so much more powerful. So much more loving. So much more smart than we will ever be. So he's in charge and in care of us. And we get to entrust ourselves to him. So he's telling us, those who maybe don't know enough or as much as us, don't push them away from Jesus, but pull them closer because they can actually trust in Jesus a lot easier than us because they have faith like a little child or will soon. Dear friends, God is calling us to be humble. To lower ourselves just like he lowered himself. All the way from glory in heaven. To submit himself to this world and all the temptations. To submit himself to death. Jesus humbled himself completely. So that he can exalt you when he rose from the dead. And will return to take you to be with him. That is the greatest exaltation. The greatest glory that we can have. We get that. Because of his humility. So we humble ourselves today and every day. May God help you. In this endeavor. This week. And I can't wait to see you next week. God bless you dear friends. Our soul.